All right, everybody, this is Nash here, and today we're going to be going over the Texas Longhorns versus Washington Huskies preview and prediction. Hope you all are having a happy holiday season. Hope you all are having a happy new year. I know I'm a little bit late. It is New Year's Eve. New Year's is tomorrow. Hope you all have a safe New Year's Eve tonight. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and let's get into this uh, preview and prediction. I know there's a lot of them already out there. I'm not going to try and be too long with this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the position breakdowns. Uh, Unlike, I'm going to try and remain unbiased. I know we're in Longhorn gear, got all the Longhorn stuff. I know. I'm going to try and remain unbiased. I'm going to give you all a case for Washington to win it. I'm going to give you a case for why Texas is going to win it. And then uh, we can go over my, uh, like like we normally do at the end. We'll go over props, what, what I think is going to happen. I've been pretty accurate on those throughout the year. Keep that in mind. And we'll put some, we'll put an underdog pick and slip out. Uh, underdog pick and slip out. So, if you like all that, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then comment down below your thoughts on the video. And then also, I normally don't do this plug this this part, but if you want to do the Underdog Fantasy Football, use code NASH for your first dollar for dollar deposit up to one hundred dollars matched, minimum ten dollars. So you put in ten dollars, you're gonna get twenty. You put in a hundred dollars, you're gonna get two hundred dollars on your first deposit using code NASH and Underdog. So use that; that helps out the channel a lot and. Let's go, hon. Let's get right on into it. All right, everybody. So we're going to start off with the quarterbacks. And Michael Penix Jr., you can see, look, leading categories, yards, yards per game, uh, top 12 in yards per attempt, completion percentage, he's 24th in the nation. Quinn Ewers, 14th in uh, yards per game and yards per attempt. Eighth in completion percentage, really accurate quarterback. Takes care of the ball a lot. 3,161 yards. That's top 30 in the nation. So, I mean – off the bat, right, Quinn Ewers is obviously the, the lesser quarterback of the two. Well, thank you again. When you add in top 25 AP opponents, so AP top 25, it's not uh, it's not looking at Texas versus Kansas when Kansas was a top 25 team when Texas played them. They're looking at top 25 teams now, so Alabama, Oklahoma, and I actually think Oklahoma State. Uh, and then uh, same thing for Washington. Colorado's not can count, okay? <laughs> They're not counting Colorado. Sorry about it, Washington fans. They're actually counting teams that are actually good. Three thousand uh, three hundred eighty-two yard point three yards for Quinn Ewers. As you can see, top five. I, I don't need to read the stats off to you. You, you probably got working eyes and a, and a working brain. So you can see, Quinn Ewers is a little bit better when you go to these categories. Now, over the last four weeks, Michael Penix has been a little bit shaky. 142 attempts, 82 completions, 57% completion percentage, 1,001, 1,017 yards, 7.1 yards per attempt. It's not great numbers. Compare that to Quinn Ewers of the last four weeks. He's had 138 attempts to his of 142 attempts, 97 completions to, to Michael Penix's 82 completions, 70.2 completion percentage to his 57.7. 1,246 yards to 1,017, 9.0 yards per attempt to not to 7.1. You tell me which one's been the better quarterback over the last four weeks. Now you can say a lot of things. Rivalry game for Washington State, uh, downpour versus Oregon State. That, those are true, and I'm willing to look past the the last four weeks. But I still say those numbers to say, hey, they exist. And they're there. And while we shouldn't focus on these numbers as hey, these this is this is this is the the word of God right here, you should still acknowledge them at that they exist and that they, it could potentially be a issue for Washington. Now what's crazy is they the deep percentage. They throw the ball deep a lot, twenty one point four percent of the time. 1,505 yards have come off that, 44% completion percentage, which is insane. 15.1 yards per attempt, 14 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Now, it's interesting is they have a high interception ratio. Like, this is their this is their worst touchdown interception ratio, despite all the other statistic categories going in their favor for the pass, for passing uh, in the deep game. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later when I'm going and breaking down the case to win. But this is one of the cases for Washington to lose because 
Michael Penix, when he gets pressured, he tends to just throw the thing up there. And that could work against them, against their favor. Now, Texas, where do we like to throw the football? Medium is our best. That's our best part. That's our best part of the game. 26.5% of the passes go in the medium game. 1,235 yards passing. 72% completion percentage. 13.5 yards per attempt. 10 touchdowns to two interceptions. It's just, it's it's insane. Now, what's interesting, not our best part, the deep game for Texas, 20 plus yards, you would think, wow. Complete percentage is not there. <laughs> it's not there. It wasn't there last year. It's there this year. 32.5% completion percentage. That's not that bad. Ele- the only thing is we're not attempting a lot of deep passes 11.4% of the time. Quinn, yours is. 481 yards, 12 yards per attempt, four touchdowns, one interception. So, all that say, I mean, Texas, they're gonna, we're going to try and hit the intermediate game. Washington. They're going to try and hit the deep. They're going to try and throw the ball deep. And I, they're just going to do what they've done well all year long. And also, Michael Penix, he does kind of have that ability to say, you know, F it, Odunze down there somewhere. Or F it, Polk down there somewhere. Now, the guy that's not going to be down there somewhere, but that will be a receiving option is Jalen McMillan. Now, moving on to the offensive line group. Now, this is a group that has caused a little bit of a stir among Texas and Washington fans. They won the Joe Moore Award. Now, was that right? Was that wrong? We'll we'll see. We're about to find out. I mean, it's going to be the best offensive line going against the best defensive line in the country. Uh, 63 pressures, four sacks, eight QB hits across the line for Washington starters this going into the game. Here's the thing. We've allowed 20 less pressures than they have. They just allowed six less sacks. So it, it just it depends on what number. If you think pressures are the end-all, be-all for offensive line statistics, Texas is the better offensive line. If you think sacks are the better statistic, end-all, be-all statistic, then, sa- then the Washington offensive line is the one. I think the main reason why you see a lower number of sacks and a higher number of pressures is when Michael Penix gets pressured, he gets rid of the thing. He does. He's not going to get tackled. He does not want to get hit. He does not want to get injured again. I mean, this dude has legit fear of injury going through his head. That's why he doesn't run the football. Ballou, number 77, guard. 13 pressures, one sack, two QB hits, 96, 97.6 efficiency. Kalepo, 71, guard. 14 pressures, 0 sacks, 1 QB hit, 98.4 efficiency. Brailsford center, 7 pressures, 1 sack, 1 QB hit, 99.2 efficiency. He is 6'2", 275 pounds. I'm going to be very interested to see if that holds up. And you know what? There's a chance that it can hold up. Look at Dan Neal. Dan Neal, guard for the University of Texas, All-American, goes on to win two Super Bowls. 6'2", 275 pounds. He was all right. Uh, They call him Stump. Who knows? Maybe we got another stump on our hands. I'm just very intrigued to see how that's going to go down between Andre Sweat and Brailsford. Now, Fatanu, 55 tackle. This is their stud tackle. This is their first round tackle. 19 pressures, two sacks, two QB hits, 97.9 efficiency. Rosen Garden, 73, number 73 tackle. 10 pressures, zero sacks, two QB hits, 99 efficiency. Now here's the crazy thing. They talk about they talk about this Faltano, Faltano dude like he is the second coming of Christ on the offensive line. But when you go to but but the same people that say that stuff and I am not saying that he's not, okay? I'm not saying that he's not. I'm just going to say the high, the hypocritical nature of these people when <laughs> they go to they go to uh Kelvin Banks and they say uh he's he he'll, he'll be an all right NFL player one day. Uh like like he's got to develop and then Christian Jones, who is just a good college guy, but he's not an NFL player. <laughs> if you combine them two, I'm going to combine their numbers. 12 pressures, one sack, three QB hits. Compared to his 19 pressures, two sacks, two QB hits. I mean, I just I feel like there's a little bit of bias going on, and that's crazy coming from me wearing a burn orange shirt in a burn orange room with a bunch of Texas jerseys behind me. 
that being said, I feel like I'm removing, removing my bias and saying this Faltano dude is pretty good. Uh, Christian Jones and Kelvin Banks are pretty good as well. I think they're going to find that out. Uh, so Christian Jones, three pressures, zero sacks, two QB hits, 98.9 efficiency. Efficiency is same for Kel- uh, for Kelvin Banks, ironically. Nine pressures, one sack, one QB hit. We got some damn good tackles. Uh, so Washington fans just expecting for Trice to come off and just abuse these dudes. Is, Trice is a very good, very good edge. To, to expect for him to just ap- just come out here and dominate these guys, a little bit of wishful thinking, I believe. Now, Dylan Johnson, 201 attempts. This is 59% of the team rushes. He's going to attack the edge. He is going to attack the edge and a lot. They run away from the center quite a bit. Uh, it's just 1,107 yards, 5.5 yards per attempt, 14 touchdowns, two fumbles. I just, look, I don't think this is, we'll, we'll get into this. We'll actually, we'll save it for the uh, making the case because that's where it fits. Uh, now, going over to Texas, rush attempts, ru- the rush attempt numbers is after the Brooks injury. So, C.J. Baxter represents 36.6% of the team rushes. Jaden Blue, 23% of the team rushes. Savian Red, 12.8% of the team rushes. And then Keelan Robinson, 4.2% of the team rushes after the Jonathan Brooks injury. C.J. Baxter's numbers on the year, 130 attempts, 603 yards, 4, 4.6 yards per attempt, 4 touchdowns. Uh, no fum- if, if I don't say it, no fumbles. Jaden Blue, 56 attempts, 339 yards, 6.1 yards per attempt, 2 touchdowns, 1 fumble. Keelan Robinson, a very small sample size, but very intriguing. 12 attempts, 134 yards, 11 point yards per attempt, uh, 11.2 uh, three touchdowns, 3.58 yards after contact, six missed tackles, force miss, uh, makes force a lot of missed tackles for how little he's carried the football. And then saving red, number 17, 29 attempts, 140 yards, 4.8 yards for attempt, one touchdown, one fumble. He's going to be a he's going to be very a, a specialized role. He's going to be our wildcat quarterback if we have to if we run that wildcat package. Uh, it's a uh, so to sum up the running back room, it's going to be C.J. Baxter is going to get majority of the touches. Jaden Blue is going to get a good number of touches behind him. Keelan Robinson is your wild card. Savian Red has a very defined role as a wildcat and a tough yardage, short yardage guy uh, that we're going to use. So pretty defined roles. Now moving over to the wide receivers, Washington. <laughs> they got some wideouts, okay? they, they got uh, DB's got their hands full. Now, what's interesting is there's been so much crap talk about how bad our DBs are going to get torched that I wonder how, you know, maybe our DBs just go out there with the chip on their shoulder and they play their, with their hair lit on fire. Uh, they did. They did all right last year. I mean, like, you look at these numbers. These are not, like, that. that's, these are not, no, holding these guys below 60 yards, that's a feat. That's a That's an accomplishment right there especially in this offense with Michael Penix throwing the football. Now, Odunze, he's going to get 27, or he has 27.7% of the team target share. Polk, 20.4% of the team target share. McMillan, when healthy, when fully, when healthy and playing above 20 snaps, 22.1% of the target share. So he is going to get targeted, just not as frequently as Odunze does. Odunze, 125 targets, 81 receptions, 1,428 yards. 17.6 17.6 yards per reception, 13 touchdowns. He gets targeted on 26% of his routes that he runs. Uh, not a huge yards after catch monster, 431 yards after catch. Yards per route run is insane at 3.04. Uh, average depth of target is 15.6. Cons- <laughs> he, he, this is a contested catch king, 70.8% of the time. And I don't have the numbers, but I mean, it is a high number of, like, it's like 28 out of 28 times. So, he's he will get a contested catch on you. He will. Uh, Jalen Polk, 92 targets, 60 receptions, just hit 1,000 yards. Literally, he's at 1,000. 16.7%, uh, six, no, 16.7 yards per reception, 8 touchdowns. Targeted on 29, 21.9% of his routes. Uh, 
Again, not as much of a yak guy. 4.56, uh, 4.5 yards after catch per reception. A lot of yards for a route run, so 2.38. And that and that yards per hour run, that's a wide receiver statistic that pretty much if you're above 2.0, good, good. If you're below it, not bad. If you're below 1.5, oof, oof, you know, it's not great. You're running, you're running a lot of routes for a little yardage. Uh, Jalen McMillan, 46 targets, 34 receptions. Again, did not play the full year. 462 yards, 13.6 yards after uh, yards per reception. 240 or 248 yards after catch, six uh, 7.3 yards after catch per reception. That's the second highest highest in this game. He's he's their Xavier Worthy type. Uh, so Jalen McMillan, certainly somebody that we're going to have to worry about. Now, speaking of the Texas wide receivers, 27.6% of the time, Worthy is the team target. Uh, he is the 27.6% of the team targets. Mitchell gets 19% of the targets for the t- from the team. Jordan Whittington. That is not the right number. <laughs> that is not the right number. Jordan Wellington is not getting high, uh, targeted at a higher percentage than uh, Adonai Mitchell, but don't worry about it. 113 yard, uh, targets for Xavier Worthy, 73 receptions, 969 yards. He should uh, be eclipsing 1,000 yards this game. Five touchdowns. The highest yak per reception in the game, 547 yards after catch, 2.29 yards per route run. Uh, Worthy is a legit wide receiver. I know there were they they've some Washington people have called into question about his size and his ability to hold up in this game. I would never question Worthy's toughness. That you will never find me ever questioning Worthy's toughness. This is a dude that I've seen get walloped on multiple occasions, pop right back up like nothing happened. So Worthy's the guy that I'm willing to write. I'm willing to write off the the low body, all that stuff for. Uh, Adonai Mitchell, this is your clutch, dude. This is your clutch for Washington fans. If the if Texas needs to play, if we got the ball, and we need to play to ice the game. You do not want to see the ball going to Adonai Mitchell. This dude is absolutely legit clutch. Seven seventy eight targets, fifty one receptions, eight hundred thirteen yards, ten touchdowns. Are the yeah are the yards after catch numbers amazing? No, no, they're not. <laughs> but do they need to be? No, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> this dude is that is a legit wide receiver. There's a reason why he's being mocked in the first round right now. Uh, they have two uh, Devin Culp and uh, Jack Westover. I believe is a I believe that's Jack's name. West I know Westover is his last name, but I believe his first name is Jack. They're, they're all right uh, all right tight ends. They're 21 targets for Jalen Culp. Uh, not not Jalen, for Devin Culp. Uh, Westover has 42 targets himself. They're about 600 yards combined. Uh, they're they're solid tight ends, right? They're, they're nothing to write home about, but they're also nothing to get mad about. Now, something to write home about, Jadavion Sanders, 59 targets, 39 receptions. We have, and this is under, this he could be, Way higher, way way higher. This is a receiver that may not have the speed of a Kyle Pitts, but this is a like as far as a receiving option, I'm I'm putting him up there with Kyle Pitts. This is a legit receiver, and he is Texas. He is third in line for Texas in targets. Now, Gunner Helm may not have a high number of targets, but he is a solid tight end. Uh. Honestly, for, for Washington fans, if you want to compare him to anybody, compare him to Devin Cole. Uh just as a similar role, right? He may not be the he may not lead in the tight end targets, right? But when he gets targeted, he's going to do all right. And uh he's a trustworthy guy. Going to the defensive line. Now, Braylon, I'm I'm not gonna we were we're kind of already we're we're, we're if you look at the time code. Yeah, we're making it. We're we're making the. This is going to be a long one, so we're going to kind of shut. Going to kind of limit how much we go on the defense, because there's way too many names to talk about. Uh, but overall total, Washington, 177 pressures, 15 sacks, 29 QB hits, a 5.1 run stop percentage. Now, 
these are a minimum of 100 snaps. So don't come at me saying, oh, the pressure number is wrong. Yeah, okay? This is the people that are going to be playing in the football game. I'm not counting, no, and this same for Texas. I'm not counting uh, the people that played in the fourth quarter versus Wyoming. Not doing it, okay? Now, Tex, uh, Braylon Trice, he is their best defensive lineman. Edge, number eight, 70 pressures, six sacks, 15 QB hits. That dude is legit. A legit guy. Now, what's crazy is Byron Murphy, our leading pressure guy. Four, <laughs> defensive tackle leading the pressures. 40 pressures. Six sacks as well. This dude, Byron Murphy's on insane. Three QB hits as well. Uh, he has, uh, Trice has 15 QB hits. <laughs> Byron Murphy is legit. But So the total numbers for Texas, I didn't say those. 197 pressures, 15 sacks, 29 QB hits, a 7.5 run stop percentage. The Texas, this is a legit Texas run defense. I do not, I don't care how much you want to run to the edge. I don't care about all that. I don't think it's going to happen. And we'll we'll get more into that in just a second. Now, the linebackers, total Washington, 278 tackles, 116 assists, 38 missed tackles. Again, minimum 100 snaps. Uh, now I'm gonna number five. Ulo Foshio, Ulo Foshio, Ulo Foshio, Ulo Foshio. Eighty-three tackles, nine missed tackles, three sacks. He is their leading tackler at the linebacker position. Texas, two hundred forty-nine total tackles, one hundred twenty-four assists, thirty-two missed tackles, minimum one hundred, hundred minimum one hundred snaps. Jalen Ford, number 41, 91 tackles, 12 missed tackles. Uh, I do believe he does not have a sack this year. Cornerbacks for Washington. Versus man, 53 targets, 29 receptions, 372 yards, 12.8 yards per reception, six forced incompletions, three pass breakups, two interceptions, five touchdowns. Versus zone, when they're playing zone. 109 targets, 61 receptions, 835 yards, 7.6 yards per reception, 18 force incompletions, 12 pass breakups, 12, 2 interceptions, 4 touchdowns. Their best cornerback. The last name might sound familiar. Why? Because he's Malik Muhammad's cousin. This is none other than Jabbar Muhammad wearing number one. Only gets targeted 6.5% of the time. Uh, not, no, okay, let me. Every 6.5 snaps, he gets a target. 75 targets, 40 receptions, four, uh, 415 yards total given up, 10 pass breakups, which is a very high, it's a good number to have, three interceptions, that would be highest on our team. Those would both be highest on our team. Uh, three receptions would be tied for highest. 16 forced incompletions, that would be highest on our team. And then versus man, he's had 20 targets, nine receptions, 93 yards, versus zone, 46 targets, 26 receptions, 286 yards given up. Now, Texas versus man, 26 targets, 7 receptions, 73 yards, 10.4 yards per reception. Texas is good versus man co- when we're When we're in man coverage, we're good. That's when we're playing our best. Uh, six forced incompletions, four pass breakups, two touchdown or two interceptions, one touchdown. Now, why do we play so little man when obviously that's what we do best at? Uh, that's probably a scheme answer that's a little bit above my pay grade, a little bit above my knowledge level, but I'm willing to bet it has something to do with how uh, Pete Kwiatkowski wants to play the football game uh, and this uh, bend but don't break mindset. Now, versus zone, 82 targets, 55 receptions, 772 yards, 14 yards per catch, uh, 13 forced incompletions, 7 pass breakups, 2 interceptions, 2 touchdowns, uh, Terrence Brooks is our best defensive back this year uh, at the cornerback position statistically. 8.1 snaps per target, 43 targets, 18 receptions, 240, uh, 251 yards, 13.9 yards per reception. Now, three pass breakups, three interceptions, five forced incompletions versus man coverage. Legit. 12 targets, nine only two receptions in man co- versus man coverage, 16 total yards given up. When he's playing zone, 27 targets, 14 receptions, 
219 yards given up. So versus man, I mean, the Texas def- uh, seven receptions versus man coverage uh, when you're playing Texas. It's I want to see a little bit more man with these wide receivers. Like, tr- look, hey, trust our wide receivers to go up against these Washington uh, Husky. Uh, uh, tr- no, trust our defense backs to go up against these Husky wide receivers. Uh, safeties uh, for Washington, 15 forced completions, 161 targets, 105 receptions, 1,145 yards. Hampton is their best. At, he's number seven, 62 targets, or he's their most targeted. Uh, 45 targets, 400 yards, four in, uh, forced incompletions, four, uh, four pass breakups, three interceptions. And he is also their best. <laughs> he's, he's their best safety as well. Uh, Jade Barron may not be a safety, uh, but he's going to be playing some safety this game. Texas, 13 forced incompletions, 153 targets, 95 receptions, 1,192 yards, 12.5 yards per catch from our safeties. Now, Jade Barron, number 23, 63 targets, uh, 35 receptions, 372 yards, three forcing completions, three pass breakups, and then only one interception. And then to finish off the players that we're breaking down, Gross, Gross, the kicker, 90, number 95, he has 13 of 17 attempts, a long of 47. So he has half the attempts that, uh, that Burt Auburn does. And... Less than half of the amount of makes that Burt Auburn has. Auburn, number 45, 28 of 34, long of 54. So there's more trust in... There, there's either... Let me, let me put it this way. There's either more trust in Burt Auburn or Washington just has not had to kick the field goals as much as Texas has. Yeah, so a little something to pay attention to right there. And uh, we're going to go into some team statistics, and then I'm going to be making our, my case for why Washington will win, and I'm going to make my case why Texas will win. Then I'm going to give you all the prop breakdowns and all that stuff, and I'm going to give you my – oh, you know what? Screw, I meant to give you my score prediction earlier. My score prediction right now is Texas 44, Washington 23. Now, let's, <laughs> let's continue on. Uh, I am going to be able to, you know – Try and remain unbiased, unlike some people, but let's let's move on. Number overload alert. Number overload alert. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, points per game. I'm not going to go through all these. Stati- I mean, I'm not just going to read off this chart to you. But as you can clearly see, Texas offense, good. Washington defense. And so let me make it a little bit easier for people to know what I'm talking about here. Uh Whoops, daisy. Okay, there we go. Okay, so Texas offense, good. Washington defense, eh. Texas run offense, good. Washington run defense, eh. Texas offense passing, good. Washington pass defense, bad. Bad, 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 bad. Okay. Washington offense, very, very good. Texas defense, very, very good. Uh, Washington run game, uh, lackluster to to be quite honest. Uh, Texas run defense, phew, amazing. Uh, Texas the Washington pass offense, good good lord, what are we what are we going up against? And then the Texas pass defense, eh, leaves a little bit to be desired. <laughs> leaves a little bit to be desired, statistically speaking. Now, that being said. Okay, so now that y'all kind of know where all the things are, it's it, it, it kind of look. Texas, the, these numbers can be a little bit misleading going over the whole season long, right? Because Washington just got off to a really, really scorching hot start, but we're still going to take it. We're still going to look at these numbers for what they are. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup. And but there's a lot of great matchups, right? So you got you got the Washington offense versus Texas defense. That's going to be just an absolutely great matchup. Uh, what's funny is it's like Washington has a statistically a bad run offense versus a great Texas run defense, and then Washington has a 
statistically great pass offense versus a statistically bad Texas pass defense. <laughs> so it's like flip flop. Uh, and then that's almost like what you get for Texas versus uh, Washington over here on defense. But I did want to go and not spend too much time on that one. I didn't want to spend time on this one. So what this is, is this is a, uh, oh, whoops. So this is the Texas Longhorns and the Washington Huskies versus the AP Top 25. There's something notable that happened. Both offenses are great. One is clearly better. The Texas Longhorns versus top 25 teams, It's it's been like that this year, okay? Number one in points per game. Number one in yards per game. <clears throat> top, seven, top six in yards per play. Top 12 in third down conversion. Top uh, 13 in fourth down conversion. <laughs> this is going to make Texas fans laugh. Red zone touchdown, red zone touchdown scoring? Still trash. <laughs> It doesn't matter. All the other numbers can go up. Red zone touchdown? Nope. Not that one. Uh, <laughs> I just thought. That, that has been a... If there's been a bugaboo for Texas. That It's the red zone touchdown scoring percentage. That's been our bugaboo this year. So, Washington fans, if you want if you want to find something to go after, go after that number. Uh, completion percentage. Uh, it's just like... It's, it's clear. The Texas offense is elite when we're like I mean top five level offense when we're playing these big games I have my theory for that in just a second Washington they experience a little bit of regression right when they play the big games they're playing some tough teams right I mean same with Texas these are tough teams that you're talking about well it's it's you expect a little bit of regression well it's it's weird you go back to the number that I just had for a second ago the numbers get worse for Washington, but better for Texas. What's going on here? So, going to move into my case for Washington win. Now, how does Washington win the football game? Is it any secret? By passing the football, okay? You pass the football, you have success versus Texas. Uh, I think the way that you force Texas to lose this game is... You stymie up in the red zone area. You hold Texas to force you force Texas to make some field goals. You have success with your passing offense. You're able to attack the edge with the rushing uh, with the running game. You're able to completely avoid Devondre Sweat and Byron Murphy and make them non factors by just scheming around them. Uh, to be quite frank, I mean you just you run this how uh, Mike like. The, the I've been mentioning this all year long. The Pac-12 is what the Big 12 was 10 years ago. Mike Leach was a huge part of that. What was Mike Leach's theory? Attack where the enemy is not. Sun Tzu, art of war. It's as simple as that. Where the enemy is not, go there. Well, there's a lot in the middle. Go there. Go to the outside. Problem with going to the outside is Texas has some good cornerbacks that are able to tackle on the outside. We have some Jade Barron. He's a enforcer in the short screen game. In the short yard and outside runs, Jade Barron is going to be an enforcer on that. So that being said, the way that Washington wins this game is by going out there, passing the ball well versus Texas defense, which is expected, getting some success on the edge, running the football to be able to extend drives. And be able, to, yeah, to, to be able to convert third downs and being able to, to hold Texas in the red zone to not score. If Washington can do all those things, then you know what? I actually kind of like Washington's chances to win this game. It sucks for me to say that, right? But it certainly exists. Washington, like I, I'm not going to sit here and try and act like Texas. The only, the only, the only, the only possibility is for Texas to blow out Washington, and that's it, right? Not doing that. Now, I do believe there are more cases for the Texas Longhorns to win this football game than there are for Washington, right? But let's make it. Let's make a case for Texas to win. How does Texas win the game? I think Texas wins this game by running the football, being physical, holding the clock, and then on the other side, <laughs> scoring in the red zone. When you get in the red zone, we absolutely have to score. 
got to lock down these wide receivers. But I do believe that we can win even if the wide receivers for Washington have a great day. I've been saying it, and if you've been listening to me on Twitter spaces, I mean, look, this is – Washington is playing USC but with a defense. That's how I liken this. I don't think Washington has the ability to handle our speed that we got. Jaden Blue, Xavier Worthy. I don't think Washington does a good job of tackling. I think they miss a lot of tackles. They don't do well in space. That's, this is something that Steve Sarkeesian schemes up very well. He gets guys the ball in space. That's that's what he does. I mean, it's similar to the argument that I just made for Washington. But it's mainly the speed. They just they don't have the dudes that have the high-level speed access that Xavier Worthy does or Jaden Blue does. You've seen it multiple times throughout the year. If you watch the, the guys that get the ball that are fast, they're able to get the edge on this Washington Huskies defense. They're able to – I mean, it's just it, – it comes down to speed in my opinion. So my case for Texas to win is to get the get our, get our playmakers the ball in space to convert in the red zone when we get down into the red zone if we need to. Because I, I I do also think that there's a good chance that we don't even have to, we can bypass the red zone completely by scoring from beyond that. I mean this is like I've said, this is a game where Steve Sarkeesian he's Steve Sarkeesian is definitely going to show up in this game, one hundred percent, and so is Quinn Ewers. Uh, Vert, I don't need to bring up the AP top twenty five numbers again, but it's just like it's a proven commodity that you got right there. So. Scoring in the red zone, uh, I also believe that Texas needs to have success running the football. Now, where this game could come down to is it could come down to field goal kicks. This is 100% a game that could come down to a last-second field goal uh, to win or tie the game. I mean, this is – look, this is a game where there's a lot of outcomes. I think a lot of the outcomes are in Texas's favor. Uh on defense, I think that what we want to do is we want to force Byron Murphy uh, to – not Byron Murphy, but we want to force Michael Penix with pressure from Byron Murphy to get the ball before he wants to. Uh, I want to see Anthony Hill come up the middle because pressure from the middle has really, really gotten to Penix this year. And I think he can get a little bit flustered. That's when, like I mentioned earlier, 14 touchdowns to seven interceptions on the deep passes – a lot of that is when he gets pressured, he just chucks the ball up there, and sometimes that does not come down favorably for him. Uh, they've avoided a lot of sacks. How have they avoided a lot of sacks? Because that ball comes out quick. I mentioned earlier I was going to talk about it. I'm talking about it now. Michael Penix just gets rid of the football when he gets in, when he gets in trouble. And I think, to be quite frank, that's what I think won them Joe Moore Award. Do I think they're the best offensive line in the country? No. Do I think they're a damn good offensive line? Yes. Uh, clearly. Like I said, you have to have a certain baseline level of competency to even be in consideration for the award. That being said, I feel it's fairly objective to say when Michael Penix feels pressure, which they've allowed 20 more pressures in Texas, he gets the ball out quicker and he does better at getting the ball out than Quinn Ewers does. If Quinn Ewers had the same reactions that Michael Penix did versus pressures, the Texas Longhorns would probably be your Joe Moore Award winners. Probably. So, yeah, th- those are my cases to win. Is basically pretty much the the, the obvious stuff. A, a, a few, a, a, a sprinkle of uh, some other, uh, I believe, unique things. I think this is a big Steve Sarkeesian game. I think a lot of people are writing like not. Not, not 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 acknowledging, not writing it off, but I just don't think that they're paying enough attention to it. Uh, this is this is Sark's game. I mean, this is literally everything in his career has built up to this one single game, right here. All the Washington, all the USC, uh, going away and then coming back to Alabama, finally getting your shot again, right? Last year, I felt multiple times that like last year it felt like we were punting, punting the year. 
Well, if we were punting the year, to Steve Sarkeesian's credit, hey, good punt, it worked. It's it's time to go. It's time to go win the damn thing now. Time out. Time out. I forgot. I forgot. To, I forgot to tell you. One of the main things why I think that Texas is going to win the game and why we why I get to the point total that I do forty four to twenty three. I think that what's going to happen is Washington is going to kick a lot of field goals. Uh, they're going to have three or four drives that end in field goals, and later on they're going to end up having to go and they're going to have to try and go for it, right? Uh, the Texas Longhorns shutting them down in the red zone, I think, is going to cause them to kick field goals. And I think at a certain point, they're going to have to say, you know what, we're going to have to keep up with this Texas offense scoring points. So we're no longer going to be able to take these field goals. We're going to have to go for it. And I think Texas is going to be able to come up with some stops on that. So that is ultimately why I believe that Texas is going to win the game. And that is my case for Texas to win the game. Now, back to regulars. Okay? Now, so prop lines and my OB guesses. Now, again, I have been accurate with these. And... We will be submitting some uh, pick em lines, so give me one sec. All right, so as always, we're going to be using code NASH for, to get your first dollar-for-dollar dollar match and to get your match up to $100 deposit, uh, first deposit on underdog. Now, some of these lines have changed a little bit, and actually, here, let me... Uh, because I normally what I do is I don't, I don't show... I don't do anything like... I wait until just now. To do the picks well I, i've done i've done a little bit <laughs> i've done a little bit of picks this year uh so far uh I, I got i got some early lines in. these were the early lines that i tried to get higher than 19.5 receiving yards for jack westover that his name is jack i got it correct nice to see that lower than 309.5 passing yards from michael Penix. jatavian sanders higher than 42 and a half receiving yards Lower 99.5 receiving yards for Dunze. Lower 74.5 for Dylan Jump. Do not do this one, okay? <laughs> do not do that pick. Do not do that pick. I'm slut. Uh, this one right here. Uh, this one's probably uh, this one's the one that I got a little bit of faith in. You can see I I did three picks. I didn't do my normal five, but and and for those that are, please this when I'm doing these underdog things, this is like what this right here. Is what I think you should be doing. Do like two, three picks, maybe four. If you're feeling frisky, if you're feeling like you want to lose money, go ahead and do five, right? But that that is the ultimate gamble. Higher 200, two, so you'll see this number's gone up. Uh, unfortunately, that number has gone up. 287.5 passing yards, higher. Uh, obviously, add my Mitchell touchdown monster. I forgot to mention that earlier. Touchdown every single game, but... It's not like y'all haven't heard it before. Lower than seventy six point five rushing yards was that? Yeah. So that that one was that line's been creeping up a little bit. And then also higher than for Keelan Robinson touchdown got a little spicy on there. Uh, Quinn Ewers higher rush touchdown or reception touchdown a little spicy. Uh, and then lower seventy six point five rushing yards. So those are the slips I already have in. But going off my prop lines that I have for uh, that I've done on Orange Blood so. I have Quinn Ewers, 331 attempts, or, uh, 31 completions, 42 attempts, 410 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Uh, Xavier Worthy, I have nine catches, 169 yards. I don't know why, but it just came to me. Uh, one touchdown. Leading rusher, Jaden Blue, 13 carries, 120 yards, one touchdown. First touchdown, I got is Keelan Robinson. Michael Penix, I got going 21 completions, 36 attempts. 295 yards, two touchdowns, two receptions, and oh my god, I. Mm. Okay, well, we're gonna pause this. It, it's not gonna pause for y'all. Just yeah. Well, okay, so now that we're back here, uh, Michael Penix, 21 of 36, 295 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I just 36 attempts. They 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 haven't gone over 42 attempts this year passing the football, and. I just, man, I really, I think Texas is going to try and keep the ball out of their hands. Uh, so, kind of similar to what happened last year for Washington in the second half to Texas. They're, they kept the ball in Texas' hands. Now, my favorite prop was over 288.5 passing yards for Quinn. Uh, 
these were the big games they had. OU, 289 yards, 2022. And 2023, 346 yards versus Washington last year, 369 yards versus Alabama in one quarter in 2022. 134 yards. That was like an, an insane pace day. Uh, 2023, 349 yards. And then Oklahoma State, 452 yards. So with all of what I just said, we're going to go ahead and go uh, make a pick and slip right here uh, using underdog fantasy football. And let's just go ahead and hop right on into it. So <laughs> we'll start off with a spicy one. We, we normally save these for last, but we'll start off with a spicy. I'll go with higher Quinn Ewers, one rushing touchdown. Could be a receiving touchdown. Uh, Keelan Rock, if you want to get really spicy and do a – that's just a rushing only. But I'll go with that one right there. Rushing and receiving. Jordan Whittington. This would this would be the one time that Jordan Whittington actually gets uh, gets that. This would be his one time. I'll go with Jalen Polk. You know what? Yeah. I'll go with Jalen Polk. I mean, this is look. This is all stuff. This is. Max multiplier has been reached. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll stop right here. I, I think that this uh, is a solid stopping point. Uh, $5. Wait, wait, is it? No, it can. Yeah, it can. Okay. It can go higher. All right. You know what? We will do. We'll, we'll take We'll take Jatavian off. I know, I know. I'm so sorry, Jatavian. Put Jack West over on. I did not mean to put 56. <laughs> I'm not doing 56 dollars that one. Confirm that. Like I said, look, don't do the, don't do the, don't do this one. Okay, don't do this one. This is that. I just threw away money on 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 YouTube. Okay, just for y'all. Just for y'all. Now, going off of what I had for the lines for Quinn Ewers. Uh, so I got 31 and 42. So obviously <laughs> he would be well above this completion percentage. Uh, well above this completion mark. I got that. Uh, let me see. I got first touchdown Keelan Robinson, but I'm going to hold off on that one right here. Uh, Uh, tough. If I had to, if I had to, I'd, I'd choose lower on that one. Uh, receiving yards. Does Jordan Whittington get more than four? You know what? I, I will say, big game. Lot of lot of attention on other people. I think Jordan Whittington. Whether targets are going to be used to di- to you know distract you know try and pull some attention off these other guys, who knows? Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take that one, right there. And then we will go under on Michael Penix passing yardage, under on Dylan Johnson rushing, and that is our slip right there. All right, everybody. This is the final slip. Higher 23 and a half completions, higher three and a half completions or receptions, uh, higher 72.5 receiving yards, lower 31 and a half passing yards, lower 76 and a half receiving yard, or rushing yards. So, all right, everybody. Monday, 7:45 p.m. Central Time. The Texas Longhorns are going to be facing the Washington Huskies in the Texas in the Sugar Bowl. I almost said the Texas Longhorn Sugar Bowl. Hopefully it is the Texas Longhorn Sugar Bowl, and uh, yeah, hopefully we're two and zero in the Sugar Bowl since twenty eighteen. All right, everybody. Hope you all have a great day. I hope this video actually meant uh, did something. I said I wanted to try and keep it around thirty minutes. That wasn't happening. All right, everybody. Hope you all have a great day. Hope Texas Longhorns win. And as always, hook. Okay.